Girls, it's time for your favorite program, Engendered. Yeah, Mommy, we're coming right away. Sophia, turn off the gas. What are your fears as a woman? And what are your doubts as a lady? You think you're alone with those thoughts? Then welcome to Engendered, where we bring you discuss, interviews, previews, experiences, opinions, and issues relating to the female gender. This is Engendered. I've been joined already with our guests seated on with us here in the studio. And today we will be doing a topic, how climate change contributes to gender equality. And our guest will be doing justice to that topic. She is Ndoma Alobo, a program intern with Creative Visions Development Foundation and a youth advocate, advocacy for climate change. Welcome to the show, ma. Thank it's you. good to have you join us. Thank I, you I learned much. you're widely traveled, but you're going to tell us about that. But <laughs> let me, let's get down because we, we are really short of time. So yeah. let's get down to the business. I have something here. It says climate change, a prevailing issue and threat to the global ecosystem has found to affect women more. Now, according to UN, women, economic, social and cultural factors contribute to climate change threats to women's health, livelihoods and safety. Now, women are less likely than men to survive climatic disasters. And according to data from the UN, 80% of individuals forced to leave their homes due to climate change are female. Additionally, most of these IDP camps, which serve as the homes of these displaced women, are frequently ill-equipped to assist them. All right, I would like to ask you, what does YAKA represent? Okay, so YAKA stands for Youth Advocacy for Climate Action mm -hmm. and the YAKA project is funded by Christian Aid Nigeria and mm -hmm. imp implemented by my organization Creative Visions mm -hmm. Development Foundation mm -hmm. and the aim of the project is to create young persons that will be able to advocate and influence for policies that mm -hmm. will serve as climate action to mm -hmm. help mitigate climate change in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, why must we engage the adolescent girls in this climate um, change solution? Okay, so as she has mentioned earlier, uh, climate change uh, causes gender inequality because women are less likely to survive. So climate change causes drought, water scarcity, excessive heat and flooding, which causes food insecurity. And food insecurity leads to many other social ills, such as migration, forced migration, poverty. Poverty can then cause people to get into crime and women, when there's insecurity, women and girls are at risk. So because they are at they are at risk of getting the brunt of those social ills. They, it's important for us to educate them so that they can participate in climate change mm. mitigation and adaptation strategies mm. and help make their lives better, take okay. charge of their lives. All right. in, the, in the terms of um, insurgents, because we also know that uh, women are affected, children are affected most likely, and they are left behind. Mm. So what is the Yaka? during to to some extent kind of a core because we can't have control uh, with of it's in suggesting especially since we are not government and stuff mm -hmm. but i believe yaka is doing something so take us through it okay so we're um, teaching people about um, the causes of climate change and how um, the things that cause climate change and how they mm -hmm. can um, join the fight against climate change mm -hmm. uh, actions such as tree planting mm -hmm. is a very important action in terms of mitigating climate change so by educating people and creating awareness about climate mm -hmm. change we hope to contribute to solving the issues of insurgency obviously like as you mentioned insurgency is something that also actors mm. especially the government mm. needs to participate in but in our own little way we are educating people about climate change mm. and with that we hope that they, they can implement those things in their mm. communities and maybe help reduce the impacts of climate change which will in them reduce the rate of crime okay and okay, okay let me come in now sorry Pamela uh saying climate change climate change seem really be uh, mm. ambiguous I'm sure our viewers will wonder oh, climate, climate change I don't change. understand <laughs> take us through that what 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 is climate change in itself? 
Okay, so climate same. change is just refers to the change in weather patterns mm. um, globally. So mm. climate change is not only something that affects Nigeria, it's a global thing. Mm. And um, long-term change in weather patterns in some places is leading to more rainfall, in some places mm. is leading to water scarcity, increased temperature, melting of the ice caps, which is causing um, increase in sea level. Mm. So climate change is just a change in weather patterns, but that change in weather pattern is different for every society. Mm. So yeah. So that's what climate change is. Okay, tell us um, in the, with aspect of education, because um, in this part of the country, uh, although it's changing and it's evolving, education seems to be kind of, um, d d d d it's not prevalent. So to some extent, girl child uh, are not allowed education. And when they're allowed, they're not allowed to go to certain levels mm -hmm. because they are girl child. Mm -hmm. So tell us um, what will, uh, through uh, education, are you um, perhaps impacting or teaching climate change? So secondary schools. So mm -hmm. we've gone to um, government secondary schools all around the Cari area, both junior secondary and mm -hmm. senior secondary. As you said, um, girl children are discouraged from reaching tertiary institution. Mm -hmm. But if we can get them at that stage where parents are more willing to send them to school, then we'll be able to teach them about climate change mm -hmm. and hopefully they'll be able to implement the actions in their life. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're talking about the impact of this climate change. How does it affect Nigeria? One, they're now the vulnerable that's the female and the children. Okay, so as I mentioned, climate change um, the effects of climate change is different in every locality. So in the northern part of Nigeria, we're seeing it is mostly water scarcity and drought. So in the lo the dry season is getting longer and drier. Mm -hmm. And even in some parts of Abuja, during the dry season, most people, their boreholes can't get water again because of mm -hmm. water scarcity. So that's very one tangible way that we're seeing um, climate change affect us in this part mm -hmm. of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the water scarcity also causes food insecurity because mm -hmm water we need water to irrigate <coughs> farms so that's one way that we're seeing climate change affect and also increase in temperature like the dry season has gotten really hot mm. and just standing under the sun there are cases of people actually fainting from heat exhaustion that's those cases are going to get um, worse unfortunately because there's going to be an increase in climate change that's why adaptation measures are, all, are also important mm. in in addition to mitigation measures mm. Mm. okay how, how far has this awareness gone Okay, so um, so far, as I mentioned earlier, secondary schools, we're going there to educate them about it. And we're also going into communities where we've actually planted trees with them. So we educate them and then we plant trees with them. And hopefully when they take the message along and they pass it on to other people. So yeah, tree planting is the major, major, major um, climate action because trees absorb carbon dioxide, which is yeah. a major greenhouse gas. So tree planting is a very important um, climate mitigation action and that's where we've been going by planting trees in schools and mm. communities and also educating them so that they can further educate other people and see the, um, the, spread, the spreading of the message. Okay, I'm sorry for taking through the aspects now. There, there seems to be like, I, I know awareness is actually still done about deforestation and now you're talking about tree mm. plantings. Yeah, Are I'm you also that. looking at talking about deforestation? Yes. So mm -hmm. deforestation um, is the major drive for deforestation in Abuja is urbanization. Mm -hmm. The people want to develop more land. And um, we can, we've gone to government agencies, Abuja Environmental Protection mm -hmm. Board and FCT Emergency Services to go to them to spread to to urge them to create policies mm -hmm. that will help to um, in the fight against climate change. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Um, it's important to plant trees, but it's better if you don't cut them in the yeah. first place. Yeah, so we're advocating that message uh, to the government officials, the ones who are in charge of um, ensuring that that doesn't happen, and um, they will take it from there. All right, so uh, you earlier you mentioned about uh, saying that you've uh, visited some communities. Tell us about the communities you've vis vis uh, visited. Okay, mm -hmm. so we went to Karishi community. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere in um, Karo, Kurudu area, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Karishi. So we went there, we met with the emir of the community, he gave us his blessing and then we educated um, some of the people there on the benefits of tree planting and we also purchased um, seedlings, tree seedlings for mm. them, mostly economic trees because in addition to um, preventing climate cha change, trees also provide food. Mm. 
So we gave them some economic food so that um, they will be more, more motivated to plant mm -hmm. more trees around them. Yeah, so we, and there was a lot of enthusiasm from the community. They were mm -hmm. very eager to mm -hmm. plant the trees and mm -hmm. they were very, um, they promised that they will take care of the trees mm -hmm. and also educate more people about the benefits of tree planting. So how long okay. is this, um, sorry, awareness supposed to go for? Okay, so the Yaka project is a six month project. Mm -hmm. So it started, it started it's a six it's month project, project. Mm -hmm. yeah um it's going to end in december so mm -hmm. and in the, within this short six month period we'll be able to reach a lot of people and mm -hmm. have significant impact mm -hmm. yeah so so any challenges challenges yeah so um government officials we meet with them mm -hmm. we talk with them but ultimately they are the ones that have the authority to stop mm -hmm. things like deforestation mm -hmm. so in that area our hands they're not tied but there's only so much you can do because we as a private organization we don't have the right or authority mm. to stop people from cutting down trees mm. so we need to talk to governments and and hope that governments will do the and uh, implement the policies mm. but you, you can say it's a challenge but we don't have the authority to do something so mm. our impact is left to government officials mm. so okay uh, earlier yeah. i wanted to actually ask you the role the government should play in this so apart from um giving them the the um, order to stop cutting down trees what other roles can the government play in this climate change okay so um fighting climate change is a two-pronged system so you have the mitigation which is stopping the emission of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and then you have adaptation okay. so in the terms of the mitigation um, government can in, um, invest in sustainable transportation like more safe and reliable public transportation so okay. that more people feel safe um, entering public transportation instead mm -hmm. of feeling they have to drive their own cars and with that um, less cars on the road means less fuel is consumed means mm -hmm. less mm -hmm. co2 and other mm -hmm. greenhouse gases are emitted and then there's also the issue of tree planting as i mentioned that's a very big one sustainable mm -hmm. transportation so and maybe they can make the cities safer so that people can walk there are some distances that you want to go to instead of driving a car if it's safe and it's well lit and you're not afraid of anything you can perhaps walk or even ride a bicycle mm, to those true. locations so investing in infrastructure that makes people feel safer in pub with public transportation is one way they can help besides tree planting and in terms of mitigation so tree planting is also important in terms of mitigation because it provides shades as i mm. mentioned people have been known to faint from heat exhaustion as the temperature increases so we need more shaded areas so that it can create a cooler climate for people to rest when they're outdoors mm, okay. and then in terms of flooding although water scarcity is an issue during the um, dry season and um, flooding is also an issue during the raining season mm. so invest more in clearing the drains um educating communities about th what they're doing when they throw their waste into the drains and also provide beans for them because some people they actually want to throw the waste away but they don't have any um beans in their community and they'll mm, just throw it anywhere yeah. yeah so government can really um assist with that so okay. Okay. how about the society the common man yeah what can they do so the common man can assist with climate action by again anywhere you can trees are important but other types of vegetation you can plant herbs shrubs they also absorb okay. carbon dioxide okay. and it needs um, oxygen so we can plant any vegetation keep um, avoid throwing waste into um waterways mm. so that the water can flow away instead of causing flooding yes and um if you can share a ride yeah with other mm. people instead of driving your own car somewhere and emitting um, carbon dioxide mm. you can share a ride mm. or walk to more places or cycle where mm. it's safe for you to do so okay we actually have limited time however i'd like to ask you this question before we go because on uh, the other day we had a guest here in the studio that made us understand we we're talking about the idps and they made us understand that or she made us underst uh, understood that uh, most of these um, persons, uh, victims, sometimes uh, have these trauma issues and it affects their education, it affects the way they think, the way they associate with people. Sometimes it cannot even be disposed to society almost immediately until, of course, this uh, issue of trauma is actually treated. So in your, uh, in, in your awareness, do you think you've achieved a level of success, especially with this girl-child that have been displaced 
most often case. Okay, so we haven't done anything um, specifically directed at displaced um, um, girl, girl child. children. Yeah, yeah but girl we have um, done um, things with girl children mm. educating. As mm. you said, that's one aspect that mm. we can probably look in, into. Mm. Yes, but as climate change has caused displacement of people, but, mm. uh, but if their, um, their communities are able to adopt some things such as rainwater harvesting so water scarcity is a big issue especially up north mm. so if they can do things like rainwater harvesting instead of them experiencing complete water scarcity during the dry season mm. they can keep water like when it rains maybe they can create um, man-made lakes or something mm. like that for the water to store or they can even store the water in tanks that's one way so that's one way they can survive with the water scarcity so instead of running mm. away from your home unfortunately you can try to implement some of the adaptation strategies mm. so that they can uh, better survive in their environment all right so earlier you said um you you're involved presently in teaching uh girl child perhaps children on uh, tree planting. Mm -hmm. Aside from tree planting, what other things are you doing to educate uh, girl child on uh, climate action? Okay, so we adopted the storytelling method as part of our advocacy and campaign strategy. Mm -hmm. So instead of just telling children facts that may make them bored, we put the information into a story that they can read and get the same information, but mm. in a way that is more entertaining for them. Mm. Yes, yeah, so we created this book called The Circle of Life. It's available in English and Hausa language. Mm. So it's a very fun story to tell people about a community. So this is just a regular community. It can be anywhere in the country or even in the world that everything was fine until they started witnessing the impacts of climate change mm. in their community. They did not, at first they didn't know, oh, this is climate change, but luckily one of the community members was educated enough to tell them hmm. this is what is going on. And the community member also educated them on um, adopt, um, and on adaptation strategies hmm. such as rainwater harvesting, like I mentioned hmm. earlier, organic farming and hmm. um, methods to increase the biodiversity in their community hmm. so that even though they can't completely stop climate change hmm. on their own, but in their own little corner, they can find ways to live with the impacts of climate so change. So are you saying that people can be unaware of climate change even though they live and exist? Yes, yeah. so if they can just be saying it as, oh, this is... The, the world changes right mm. changes changes um the only constant in the world we mm. always tell ourselves so when your um, grandparents are like oh this is not how it used to be for you mm -hmm. this is how it's always been and even if it was different for you you'll be like okay every change is constant nothing is permanent so many people are actually mm. living with the effects of climate change but they don't know that it's climate change mm. yeah so okay that. okay now what is the effect of climate adaptation when we have um flooding Okay, so one way that um, society can help with that is avoid building on areas that are prone to flooding. Yeah, because of the um, push for more land and urbanization, people want to build in certain areas. But the best way to adapt to flooding is to avoid building in certain <coughs> areas that are more prone to flooding. Another way is to build waterways so that the water can flow back into the seas and oceans and keeping those waterways cleaned and always maintained as well. Then you can build um, buildings on sticks. In parts of Asia, they have like the ground floor. There's no resident there. It's just places for water to flow through. So mm -hmm. that's another way that um, other people in another part of the world that are experiencing flooding, that those are the methods that they have adapted to survive with flooding as well. And um, they also have um, insurance. So you, sometimes you might not be able to completely avoid flooding, but mm -hmm. um, recovery. So if um, flooding happens, unfortunately, you are not able to escape it um, at, because you didn't take adaptation measures. There are measures um, like insurance so that even though people lose property, like the yeah. weight on them yeah. is not mm -hmm. as um, heavy so that the impact on their emotional yeah, well-being and physical well-being mm -hmm. is not as um, strong as okay, well. Okay, so earlier when you're listing the communities that you're reaching out to, it seems as though they are just perhaps in Abuja. Why did you choose Abuja? Okay, so um, our organization is in Abuja okay. and um, we have more knowledge of Abuja. Like we would like to expand into other communities, but I say charity begins at home and sure. Abuja is home for more yeah. people. Mm -hmm. And as we're implementing this project in Abuja, we're learning more lessons that we hope that we, uh, we can able to implement in other communities mm -hmm. as we spread our message across Nigeria. Yes. Okay, but, okay, but are you looking at um, extending to uh, places like Ogi State, which is prone to water? Yes, yeah, so we're looking to expand. Uh, 
um, ex expand our projects mm -hmm. into more communities. But mm -hmm. we're starting here in Abuja, as, as we're uh, implementing here in Abuja, we're learning um, about um, how to better implement this project. Mm -hmm. And with the lessons we learned here in Abuja, we'll be able to develop projects that will be able to spread to other communities. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about the IDP camps. You know, issues like war, earthquake, and all other natural disasters has caused many persons to be displaced. And in that um, IDP camps, we have children, we have the, um, the female gender there. And most times, this um, female gender have to look up to those men guiding there. And sometimes when they want to take their bath or something, the men are still there. They don't give them their space. What is your organization doing towards this? Okay, so yeah. uh, we don't okay. have anything particular in that area of um, safeguarding um, female um, IDPs. Yeah. yeah, but as I said, we have these our stories. We have with them in English and Hausa. Okay. So we might not be able to assist in that way, but with the strategies we've um, told in this book through a storytelling approach, maybe, um, and we have in English and Hausa, the community um, there, like the IDPs, maybe they can see strategies that they, could, they can implement in their communities if they do decide to go back to their home states and community. Okay, yeah. okay, let's talk about the strategies. Maybe one of them might be watching us so they can know the strategies even without them reading your book. Okay. The, um, the common ones that they can actually practice. Okay, so I mentioned rainwater harvesting. So okay. this is a method that in the rainy season when the rains are heavy, the community can come together to build man-made lakes or reservoirs or people can find a way to channel rainwater, excess rainwater into tanks multiple tanks and store them so that during the dry season they have water that they can use for their daily activities including agriculture if they decide to mm -hmm. do so and then there's something called um recycling of gray water so the water you use to wash your dishes and your clothes if it doesn't have bleach you can use it to water your plants so when you wash your clothes instead of just pouring the water away you can use it like I said, as long as the water doesn't have bleach, yeah. you can use it to water your well, plants. How about, how about the soap? The kind of acidic so the so soap is not actually toxic. Mm. The concentration of detergent that you're using to wash your clothes will not kill your plants. Mm. Yes, so you can do that. There's also from dishwashing, when you wash your dishes as well, you can put the water somewhere and use it to water your plants. Mm. And try to use as little water. So instead of maybe like using, instead of using a full bucket, you can use like a third of the bucket, half a bucket. That's for people that are staying in um, areas that um, are suffering from water scarcity. Mm. And this is something that people usually do, like when they are brushing, they leave the tap open and just allow the water to rush. But mm. if, when you wet your toothbrush, you can turn off the tap, mm. brush your teeth, and when you're ready, you turn on the tap again and, and use the water instead of just letting the water run completely. So all those water conservation mm. strategies, they can employ that in their mm. life to help with water management. Okay, in terms of the awareness, um, do you reach out, to, do you on your own reach out to people or people really can contact you if they want? Yeah, so, um, CDEF, we have our social media pages where we all our information is there and we also do um, advocacy as well with social media posts. We educate people on things that they can do in their daily mm -hmm. life as an individual, as a, as a community to help um, mitigate and adapt to climate change. So mm -hmm. we, we have information on our social media platforms uh, as well on how mm -hmm. people can better join the fight against climate change. Okay, earlier you spoke about tree planting. I've also heard about it. And the day if someone was trying to explain how to help climate change, somebody spoke about recycling of plastic. How does that help the climate change? Okay, so um, plastic is made of um, fossil fuel. So it's a byproduct of the fuel production um, thing. Mm -hmm. And then when um, um, plastic is thrown away, most of it ends up being burnt. Mm -hmm. And when you burn it, it's okay. releasing more carbon yeah, dioxide yeah. into the environment and also okay. some poisonous gases as well. Mm -hmm. So recycling plastic um, is a way to avoid people burning plastic, which will lead to the emission of more CO2. Mm -hmm. But besides um, um, recycling plastic, one thing we can do is try to avoid the generation of plastic. So maybe use and um, buy sitting. drinks in aluminum cans mm -hmm. instead of um, plastic bottles because aluminum is more recyclable than um, plastic. plastic. Plastic, you can only recycle it once, but aluminum, you can do it oh, yeah, for no. a long time, okay. like over 80 times. All right, still talking on this. I've also heard people say, do not burn bushes. So do, does, it has any, does it have any impact on the climate change? Yes. Yeah, so again, when you burn um, carbon-based um, substances, they release CO2 into mm. the atmosphere, mm. carbon dioxide, which is one of the 
um, most important uh, um, greenhouse gases. Mm -hmm. So yeah, bush burning is also a, um, an activity that contributes to climate change. Mm -hmm. So um, instead of burning bushes to clear it, because farmers, I'm sure they want to save their energy. They don't want to be weeding. They just mm -hmm. want to cut it down. So um, they can find a mechanized way of um, making their weeding faster mm -hmm. instead of just uh, burning bushes. And burning bushes also causes death of some animals mm -hmm. because there might be some um, um, animals that are living there besides livestock that are living on the farm. And when you burn the bush, it also kills them as well, mm -hmm. and which is affecting the biodiversity of Nigeria. All right, now, so going forward, because we're running off, going forward, uh, what message, I, because it's... Uh, a climate advocacy what message are you sending across okay so our first message is to plant trees and vegetation in mm. your communities okay. then also avoid um clogging up drains by throwing um, waste into them and also you can um, find tips on how individuals can um, better um, protect the environment as an individual and as a society so yes planting trees and vegetation is one way that people can contribute to the fight against climate change. Thank okay. you for coming. And uh, but one thing I've learned from what she, she said is we all have a collective responsibility to play yeah. in the whole of this. Although Yaga, Yaga is doing on its own the best, mm. right? But we all have collective yeah. role to play. All right. Thank you so much for coming thank on the you. show. We do hope that, of course, we'll call on you next time. Mm -hmm. And we do hope that when we call on you, you answer. You answer. <laughs> all right. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much for thank joining you. us on Agenda uh, this very beautiful evening. And thank you for being part of this episode. We all have a role to play on climate change action. I am Victoria Agni. I am Pamela Ajero. Thanks for staying with us. Bye right. for now. <laughs>